Next, we have approval of the minutes. I would like to take the regular meeting March 25th, 2014, and the closed meeting of March 25th, 2014 uh, together. May I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Ms. T. Day. Aye. Ms. Holland. Aye. Ms. Sochler. Aye. Ms. Paul. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Dutch Kerrigan. Aye. Ms. Kashgarian. Aye. Dutch Griffin. Aye. And moving on to item number three, receipt of notices, communications, hearing, and petitions. This is the part of the meeting where anyone in the public may address the board, and I know that we do have a few people who are here planning to address the board. Um, I would ask that we try and keep comments to five minutes or less. But I look forward to hearing from each of you. I'm uh, Rick Soler. I'm the chair of the communications department, and perhaps to the delight of many members of the board, I'm the past president or past oh, president. Hold, hold a second, Rick. Right, right. I don't think the mic is on. I'm Rick Soller, the yeah, <laughs> chair of the communication department, and maybe to the delight of many board members, the past president of the union. Recently, a decision was made to not extend the professor emeritus status of Suzanne Liebman, so what you'll hear tonight is testimony from a variety of people, as well as a petition from many others about what a tragedy this is. You'll hear from students who'll tell you about the positive effect that Susan had on them, You'll hear from adjuncts, they'll tell you what uh, role model she'd been to them, and you'll hear from other faculty members telling you what a great colleague she was. Most of all, you'll hear that an effort should be made to keep her, and if the reason for not doing so is financial, please let us know. We'd be happy to work something out during our current contract negotiations. The rationale involves personality conflicts. I'm sure everyone in the communication department would be happy to mediate. If it's a counseling issue, we've got a whole counseling department that involves her teaching. As surprising as that would be, I'm sure there'd be plenty of people who'd be able to help her as she's helped them. And let me give you an example of a couple letters along those lines. This one, one dear to my heart, is from Nedra Adams. She says that I've been employed as a faculty member in the communication department since 1991. In my 23 years of service at CLC, I've only felt the need to address the board on one other occasion. On that previous occasion, when I found it necessary to address you, I witnessed the power of the board to effect change at CLC by reversing a decision that had already been made. I'm hopeful that the board will consider using its power to reverse a decision that I find terribly unjust. The decision I speak about is the denial of Professor Emeritus status to my colleague, Suzanne Liebman. I assure you that I wouldn't be taking your valuable time this evening if even internal processes of addressing this issue had not already been attempted. Suzanne and I were both hired in 1991, and I marveled over the years at her constant commitment to creating bridges instead of barriers to student learning. Having served on curriculum commission with Suzanne for many years, I know she's the main reason we now have a model in place to allow students who have not yet met all the criteria to be considered language proficient or reading writing ready. The opportunity to take some credit classes as long as they're also taking English 109. Suzanne's also making sure that faculty members don't create unnecessary barriers that may prohibit students from demonstrating their ability to succeed in college-level courses. Whenever I make decisions about curriculum and teaching, I hear Suzanne's voice asking, how will this help student learning? Not only is Suzanne always advocating for students and curricular issues, she's also dedicated to providing English as a second language students with real-life experiences practicing English with people they're going to meet in the community. I've learned so much about intercultural communication while attending her innovative conversation cafes. What a joy to sit with potential future students who are conversant in English to discover their unique cultural practices and to communicate with them their ability to communicate in two different languages, which despite my years of higher education, I'm still unable to do. Several Su Suzanne students have sought permission to sit in on some of my credit classes so they can experience firsthand what transfer level classes will be like as they transition from ESL classes. When these students enroll in my classes, I feel honored that they're selected, they selected me to help guide them on their educational journey, a journey that started with Suzanne. So far, I've spoken about Suzanne's stellar work inside the college, but in my opinion, 
To be a truly exceptional faculty member, one should also venture outside the institution and view the academic institute from a broader perspective. Suzanne has done that too. Her willingness to take on the presidency of the statewide organization in ESL, Illinois TESOL, and bilingual education, as well as her work with the Illinois Community College Board as both regional and state level, is a further testament to how she contributes to her department and how she represents CLC to other institutions. Suzanne is a visionary as witnessed by her ability to create new programs and not, and not all faculty members such as myself have been gifted with such vision. We need colleagues like Susan around to help us guide and share our vision. For all these reasons I've mentioned, I believe Suzanne Liebman is the quintessential faculty member who should be granted emeritus status. Why would we at CLC select a less experienced faculty member when a faculty member like Suzanne is willing to continue her service to the college? In closing, I want to share with you that I read articles from the Chronicle of Higher Education almost every day, and it's not lost on me how the issues of how institutions grant emeritus status appear tenuous at best. I understand that our contract language states that there's no guarantees that emeritus status will be granted, and I'm not suggesting that such status should be granted automatically. However, I do believe that it should, be, should not be denied capriciously, which appears to be happening in this case. However, for all the reasons I've listed in this letter, I urge you to reconsider Suzanne Liebman's Professor Emeritus status. CLC is a relatively new institution with only 40 years or so of organizational history. Suzanne and I have experienced more than half of that. I leave you with a quotation from Jay Perini in the May 12, 2000 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education. In the article, Living Up to the Meaning of Emeritus, he states, the retired professor holds a great treasure, experience. It's the kind of thing that only trial and error can produce. The wisdom and institutional memory that, that old heads carry are desperately needed by younger faculty members who should not have to continuously reinvent the wheel. Forgetting is the easiest thing in the world to do and the hardest to recover from. So it's not mere kindness to include emeriti in the workings of an institution, it's common sense. Please use common sense and grant Suzanne Lehman Professor Emeritus status. Sincerely, Nedra Adams. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marilyn Sarich. I'm an adjunct ESL instructor in the Adult Education Division, and I'm also president of the CLC AFO. Um, I have a short statement um, that I'd like to read, and I do have um, statements from about 10 other uh, adjuncts. I won't read all of them, but I do have copies uh, if the board would like to have those copies. We'll place those, we'll place, those will be placed in the minutes. Okay, yeah, thank any, you. Anything that you have that you can put in writing and give to us, we will accept. Great. Thank you. In 1995, I was hired to teach a low advanced ESL class at the Lakeshore campus. I'd been teaching only about one and a half years and was still quite green. However, for the spring semester, I was asked if I wanted to team teach an intensive class with Suzanne Liebman, full-time faculty. I jumped at the chance. I wanted to improve my skills and thought what better way to improve than to learn from someone with more experience. And that was how I met Suzanne. She became my mentor and friend. She spent a lot of time taking this green teacher and turning her into a more mature and thoughtful instructor. Suzanne mentored many of us in adult ed and always made time to answer questions, provide guidance, and be a sounding board. Her students were always her first concern, though. Her dedication to her students is complete. She has worked incredibly hard for more than 20 years to be sure that they've received the best possible education she can provide. Suzanne also gave unstintingly of her time and talent to many committees and commissions, both inside and outside CLC, always with an eye to making CLC a better place for all. Many of us in adult ed feel that the denial of Suzanne's status is not related to her teaching performance, but rather to an event last fall. One of her students appeared at a board meeting to protest the cancellation of intensive ESL classes. Suzanne had nothing to do with this um, student's appearance uh, and the statement. And, and to some of us, denying her, her the renewal of her emeritus status does smack of retribution. Denying her, uh, Suzanne her professor emeritus status is wrong. I respectfully request that the board rescind this decision and restore her to the classroom, which is her rightful place. Thank you. Would you like these now? Hi, my name is Rebecca Riola. 
I'm a student from Lake. I'm sorry, I'm uh, I'm a student from Lake Shore Campus, Wakigan. Um, I just want to talk about Susan because she helped me since I began to learn English. Not only me, she helped everyone she needed. All the time, she was available for us. Always, she found it the better way to explain me when I didn't understand. She, was, she always was friendly and very passionate. She made me feel comfortable in class when I can't pronounce. I remember one day when I had problems, I, I wouldn't go to class anymore. She healed me carefully. And, and told me with your voice calm, don't worry, we are going to look for a solution. She, she found the best solution for me. She encouraged me all the time. I could realize that not only me, all my classmates, we were doing our best because we don't want to miss this class because every day, she was teaching us something new. I think she is the best teacher that I have ever met. Always ready. She was not only my teacher, she was my friend. She was worried that I would not leave the school. I was to say thanks to Susan for her support, for her words that, that this is because I'm still in this school. She's a great teacher and I would like to ask that she back uh, to teach us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry first because I didn't wrote Latin, but I want to tell you with the bottom of my heart about Susan. Eight years ago, I started learning English, and Susan was the first teacher that I have. Also now, I am taking CLS uh, general office. I am a CLC student, but before to complete it, I had to get my language proficiency. I don't have my language proficiency yet, and we need teacher as to help us as students as like me that English is not a first language to get to get it. Please give give her an opportunity to come back. Thank you. <laughs>